Hey guys, before we get started on today's project, I just wanted to let you know about something new with the channel. Some of you may have heard of Patreon, but I have just joined that recently as another way for you guys to connect and show your support for this channel. Hopefully one of these videos along the way over the last couple of years that I've been doing this has been helpful to you. So with Patreon, I'm introducing a way for you to financially support this channel as well as gain extra insights some behind the scenes, extra content and early footage of things I release on there before they go to YouTube. Also all the content that I put on there will will be ad free so you don't have to click through any ads. Thank you guys for continuing to subscribe and watch the channel and be supportive. On with the show. All right, I decided on my next project for the Boxster. I am going to get the wheels refinished. So I'm going to actually paint them myself with the help of a guy that I met on Facebook who has just done his himself. I'm going to learn the process as I go, but the first step is going to be to take the wheels off. I just want to show you a quick before. So these are the wheels before. You can tell they're not terrible, but obviously have several gouges in them that I want to get rid of. So that wheel was by far the worst one. The other ones look more like this. Pretty good overall, but uh, still some scratches on them. All right, here is the parts list. First, I have my clear over here with the hardener. I have this paint, which they already mixed the reducer in it for me, so it's ready to spray. Just a rattle can of primer some painter's tape, uh, eight kitchen garbage bags not pictured. And here are the part numbers from Napa, in case you're interested in the exact parts. So the grand total, just add 10 bucks approximately to this, so 115 bucks. So first step is gonna take them off and I'm gonna take them to somebody locally here in town to sandblast them for me because I don't have that equipment. He's gonna charge me 40 bucks a wheel, so you know, 160 bucks, not too bad to get them really cleaned up and save me a lot of sanding. All right, wheels off, center caps out, and I took a pen and just marked the back of the tire which one is which, so I can put them back on the same way. This one's the right front. Oh, and once again, quick jack for the win. No, they don't sponsor me, but they probably should. I'm just gonna pull off all the wheels and take them using my transport vehicle to get them sandblasted. And I'm just gonna leave the car up here until it's all done. Of course, if you have another set of wheels, that works too, because then you can not block your whole garage. All right, I just picked these wheels back up from the sandblaster and they're rougher than I thought they would be, so I'm going to be doing some sanding now to smooth them out some. So I just got a little bit of 220 sandpaper. I had a big square of it and cut it down into fourths. And as you can see, I just tested it here with a couple light passes and uh, it's really easy to get it smooth just with this. So uh, here's a rough side that I haven't done at all yet. And All it takes is that and it's already really smooth, smooth enough for painting. So I'm just gonna take the sandpaper and touch it up. All right, well, this angle shows pretty well that this area got blasted and sanded all the way down to the metal. And most of everything that's on here that I've been sanding for a while is still the, uh, chemical stuff that they prime it with, I guess, at Porsche. So I told the sandblaster guy this, and he said if he goes down deeper, it might hurt the aluminum underneath, but it's just adding a lot of time for me sanding. If he would have just taken all of this off, but he recommended just sanding this, priming over it, because it should be a good base layer for the primer to bond to and not risk damaging the aluminum, but it adds a couple hours for me. So I guess I'm gonna keep sanding. Also, according to all of these guys, they say that I probably don't even need to sand this because the primer and top coat and everything will fill all of this in and be smooth. So I'm not sanding it completely flat, but I am at least going over it one pass. So it looks like this instead of like this. So just like with my decision to leave the tires mounted on here, you have to decide how much prep and process is worth it to you. So some people will probably freak out that I'm leaving the weights on so I don't have to rebalance them. And there's some tape marks down here. It's 
also right behind this, so nobody is ever gonna see this except for when I take it off. Same with cleaning in here and painting in here. You're gonna have a center cap on, so nobody's gonna ever see that either except for when you take it off. But if you're the kind of person that needs that cleaned and painted as well, then knock yourself out. After a good rough sanding, I'm just gonna take my hose and spray them off for the well. I just leave these out here in the sun to dry. And the last step before painting is I'm gonna take some denatured alcohol and a shop cloth that doesn't have a lint all over it and wipe these down to get all of the dirt, grease, anything else on there so that it will be completely clean and prepped for our paint. So I just got some of the alcohol on here and rubbing all of the surfaces down really well that are gonna be painted. Also for this application, when I just did that right now, I can see that it is leaving some of the red dye behind from this. So I'm gonna get a cloth that doesn't have dye on it either. So you can see as you're scrubbing down the area, there is dirt that's coming off. Make sure you wear gloves for this and that you're in a well-ventilated area because this stuff can be strong. All right, for my next step, I'm gonna use a roll of 3M tape and a kitchen trash bag. I'm gonna cut it open. I'm just gonna cut it all the way down here and all the way down the back, so it'll be one long piece. So now after cutting it, it just unfolds like this. Take a second bag and do the same thing. You're gonna need two bags for each wheel. Okay, so I'm gonna take some, I think this is like inch and a half wide painter's tape and start tucking it under the edge of our rim here. And the purpose of this, of course, is to keep the paint off of the tire once we spray. So I'm going to take several pieces of this tape and work our way around the wheel. And I am sticking it to the inside of the tire, but I'm leaving this flap sticking up because we're gonna bring our bag up to that and push it down over the bag. All right, now you can see the tape all the way around. I'm gonna take the bag that we just cut open and go around the edge, start attaching our tape. And when your bag runs out, just get the second one going. Okay, now we just have our rim exposed and none of the tire. And we'll be able to flip this over and do the same thing on the back, but just make sure you set this on something soft so it's not going to scratch it up. All right, it's all sealed up. Obviously the back side is much less important because you're never gonna see any overspray back there. So I'd actually recommend starting with the back side instead of the front side like I did so you can get some practice with it. Don't forget to cover up the valve stem and it's ready for painting now. All right, this is the primer that I bought from Napa's paint department. All right, I've got the wheel out in a nice ventilated area. Make sure you shake this up really well. They put this on a shaker for me when I bought it, so it would be shaken up really well. So at this point, I'm just following the instructions on the can, holding it six to nine inches away. And I'm gonna do nice, nice smooth arcs. I'm gonna practice on the inside though, just so I can see how this can sprays. All right, so just starting with a really, really light coat. All right, this is a really, really light application. Spun the wheel around the other way. So I'm gonna do some light coats with this. All right, after letting it sit for five or 10 minutes to dry on the first coat a little bit, I'm gonna go back with a second coat. I gave them all at least three good coats and I still have at least a quarter or more of the can left. But we are primed and we're gonna let them dry overnight and then take them for paint. 
Okay, I got my wheels all over here. Uh, I met Kenny online on one of the forums. So he is graciously volunteered to help me paint these with his gun. So I'll let you, uh, I'll let him introduce himself. Yeah, Kenny Boggs, uh, Aaron had seen a set of the wheels that I had done for myself that uh, actually turned out pretty nice. So uh, he decided to, to come down and uh, we're gonna try to get his, uh, get his wheels looking, uh, looking good today. So uh, we're gonna talk about here in just a second about kind of some tips and tricks and how to set your gun up and cleaning and prep and everything like that so you can have a, uh, have a pretty good result. Yeah, so I primed him at my house yesterday and drove them over to his house this morning. And right now he is just making sure that all of the dust and fingerprints and stuff from moving yeah. them around are all cleaned off so the paint will stick. <laughs> yeah, wax and grease remover. That's always a good uh, good prep tip before right before you spray with a good lint-free lint -free cloth, which this one is not doing that great of a job. I'm gonna have to wipe it back off again. It's supposed to be lint-free, but it's, it's not. So uh, yeah, I'll have to go back over there. All right, we got our paint. It looks pretty cool, nice and flaky, gunmetal. I just picked it off from a random uh, paint sample. Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah, it's our video, and I'm actually going to pour a bunch of it out in the cup. Make sure that I don't have anything still stuck to the uh, bottom of the can. And it's mixed up really good. You can usually feel it if it is, and there'll be little chunks come up on the bottom of your stir stick, but it's actually pretty good. Yeah, they just made this fresh for me two days ago, so it shouldn't be too settled yet. Yep, no, that's good. We're going to get some put in the gun. Now let's see if it will strain through. You always want to strain the paint even though you think it's uh, clean and it just comes out of the can. There might be some little debris, but sometimes these metal flakes might be too large and they may not strain through it very well. Actually, I think this is straining pretty good. If you see the paint get clogged up, yep, that's actually working really well. So it's just the right size. So. Sometimes it'll just sit there in a puddle and won't drain in at all and won't filter. But uh, you can get various sizes of strainers. That one's 190 microns. But yeah, it's letting all the metal flake get through. Now you're mentioning the importance of this is because there is another filter inside the gun. Yeah, there's another filter inside the gun that I have removed due to what we're shooting because sometimes it can get clogged over time with the metal flake. So typically you always want to leave that in there, but as long as we have strained this really well and it stays clean, we shouldn't have any problems. But uh, depending on the size of the metal flake, it, it may clog up your strainer or might, may clog up the filter that's on the, uh, on the inside of your gun. I think we're ready to spray. One of the big things is, is, is this is a cheap HVLP spray gun. I think this was $39 on Amazon. It's a Campbell Husfield. A lot of people use the Harbor Freight guns, which work great as well. And really the key is, is just uh, practicing with them, playing with them, and, and knowing how to adjust them. The, the fan spray size uh, adjustment is on the side here. This, the air pressure and this adjustment, I think, is the most critical. When you're spraying wheels, it's such a small confined area. This adjusts the amount of paint that comes out of the gun. And typically between one and two turns out, so it's turned in all the way, I'm making one complete revolution and I'm gonna start right there. Usually between one and two, you, you don't want, you wanna be able to get in the lug nut holes, you wanna be able to get in the cracks and crevices, but you don't want runs. So you actually wanna start out with the least amount of paint as possible. And this first coat, typically they're all primed they're all ready to go. This first coat, you wanna put a really light tack coat on. You don't wanna worry about full coverage. You don't need it to look nice on the very first coat. Uh, you just need a light, light tack coat and we'll let that uh, flash off for 10, 10 minutes or so before we put a second coat on. You don't need a huge amount of air pressure too when you're doing wheels. Uh, probably somewhere around 30 pounds of pressure, 30 to 40. Uh, coming out of the gun is uh, is plenty adequate. You don't want a lot of extra overspray, and uh, you just want to make sure that it's uh, atomizing properly, and uh, just test it a little bit before you uh, before you end up spraying. Spray pattern. It's not a real wide spray pattern. It's fairly narrow. 
uh, for the wheels. We don't need a wide spray pattern and there's not a ton of paint coming out. So I think that's a good starting point. Because this is not the, uh, it's always best to have a spray booth, but uh, we're DIYing this at home. So we have some fans to try to help evacuate the overspray and uh, keep it at bay. Also, you should probably be, if you're doing a lot of spraying, have a uh, organic vapor uh, respirator on. During the COVID uh, vi virus outbreak, I was unable to locate one this weekend, so I'm kind of uh, wearing a, just a normal HEPA filter to uh, help. But as long as we have enough ventilation, we should be good. So we're actually gonna try to uh, spray and get a really light first initial tap coat. Uh, we've already wiped them off with the wax and grease remover. They've been sandblasted, they've been primed, so uh, we're going to look, put a little tack coat of this color on there and kind of see how it turns out. All right, let's see how we spray this in. Yep, so we're just going to kind of do it light. We're going to get uh, one thing that you, you also want to do, and the reason why you want to try to paint the backs of the wheels, is when you look through the wheels, these areas right here, they're actually pretty visible through these openings. So you definitely want to have these in the edges of the spokes. And these areas through here, they are actually fairly visible, more visible than you might think when you're looking through the wheels. So you'll want to make sure you got got pretty decent coverage there at least. So uh, yeah, we're going to make sure we got those covered pretty well. And we'll do the we'll do the front last since they're the most important. So uh, we're just going to get a little bit, a little bit of color on there. Definitely not a lot of paint. We're not worried about getting a huge, huge amount of coverage. We just need a little bit of a light tack coat and you don't want any runs. Yeah, that's actually fish eyes where we might need to, if we, if we do that on another one, we might need to clean it with wax and grease remover a little bit. But those fish eyes are typically from it not being perfectly clean. Mm -hmm. The good thing is, and while we do this side first, it's not going to be visible at all, the good, the good thing. So we're going to make sure that the uh, fronts are absolutely clean and clean and perfect. Yep, so let's see if we can do a little better on this one. And if uh, yeah, if this one does that, we might do a little re-cleaning okay. on the other one. One thing that I'm probably gonna start doing since we've got some fish eyes and I'll definitely do it on the front in addition to some extra cleaning. See where I did a lot lighter coat of paint here? I didn't get much coverage, but that's one of the things you might want, you always want to try to do. I put it on a little too heavy on the backs, but an extra light coverage. And when that tacks up, the next coat should be much smoother. If I would have put it on heavier, you would see I would have got more, more fish eyes. So that's where it's good to experiment. You always want to try to get some good coverage on the first coat, but you're better off just, just doing a light dusting on your first coat get it to stick and tack up and then on your second coat it'll help you eliminate the fish eyes so uh, that's definitely definitely something i'm going to going to do the rest of the way here is just put a, put a much lighter coat for the first first coat <laughs> All right, on the second coat, those fish eyes pretty much went away completely. So on the front, we're gonna do even lighter coats and uh, hopefully they don't come up at all. All right, we're using finish one clear coat. And I've made this mistake before, but uh, good clear coats with an HVLP gun, you always have a hardener mixed with a clear, it doesn't set up. I have accidentally mixed reducer instead of hardener with a clear <laughs> and you pretty much have to strip strip it off with lacquer thinner and start from scratch so we're going to make sure that we use the hardener with the clear you just got to read the instructions and it'll tell you that uh, 
basically it's a four to one ratio between the clear coat and the hardener. And we're basically just gonna mix up some clear coat, get it in the gun, and we're gonna put uh, a coat or two of clear on the back of the wheels before we uh, flip them over and start on the front. You'd be completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Let me set it down there and make sure we got it level. Just a tad bit above the floor. a little past the four, but close. Uh, there's a four to one. Uh, it's pretty close. Close enough, I'll just, just put a little. I swear up to that line, does not, it does not look like it's a fourth of what I poured in there, but I could be wrong. <laughs> and we'll put a little splash extra. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't gonna hurt it, but uh, yeah, we'll do that. And stir sticks would be great, but I ran out and did not <laughs> think to uh, get stir sticks. So you definitely wouldn't, especially now, one of the things, his paint, they already mix the reducer in it. So typically before you spray it, you're gonna to have to add a reducer uh, based on what the package says. So uh, one reason you didn't see us mix reducer with the paint is uh, they actually went ahead and added it for him at the paint store, which was nice. All right, I think we're ready to lay on our first coat of clear on the back. Kind of like we did with the first coat of the, uh, of the uh, paint. So. Start light. So we got two coats of clear on the backs. So that's our practice side. Next, we're gonna let these dry, flip them over and do the front. All right, we flipped the wheels over and one of them, my paint stopped sticking very well in one area. So we did a little note card trick, just tuck them in the rims there and it will seal it. So the rest of them are good. Here is our before turn to where there is not a lot of paint coming out right now for this first coat. We're just going to do a really, really light dusting. Uh, so I've got it one turned out. We've already cleaned them really good with wax and grease remover. Uh, the troublesome spot is where you really want your paint turned down is trying to get in the lug nut holes without getting runs around them. So uh, that's where we're going to try to see if we can get some color in there without, uh, without getting a run. Like I said, just light coats we're gonna to have to do some layers might even need to adjust your fan control so uh, we're gonna to have to get some light coats don't try to get much at uh, on the very first try yeah just just light coats we're gonna to have to do a little Little bit at a time because you don't want any runs. Yep, too little is a lot better than getting too much and getting a run, especially on the front. We're just gonna, now we're just gonna do a light dusting on our first coat just to get something, uh, some real light color on there. So we're not gonna go heavy, just something really light. Oh, our note cards trick is not gonna work. <laughs> we'll leave that one in place. See if it works. Yep, we just want a really, really, really light coat that first first go around. I got a first really light coat on them and they look really good. If you look really close, you can see where there's still some texture in the wheels, but because this is a metallic paint, I think it's gonna help blend really well. Plus, as we build the layers up, it's gonna start filling in. All right, here is light pass number two. It's looking really good, especially in the holes. There's some areas where it still needs some more paint buildup to get into all of the pits, but there's also some areas you can see here where it's starting to look glossy already.
<laughs> yeah, no, I think uh, every coat that we do is uh, looking better and better. Uh, I'm going a little bit heavier each coat that we do to kind of fill in some cracks and crevices left from the uh, sandblasting. So uh, that is uh, third coat. Yep, that was coat number three. Yeah, that's coat number three, and we're gonna go a little bit heavier. We might need another coat or two before we start uh, clearing them, but they're starting to uh, starting to look really good now. So you adjusted the dial on the paint gun that time, opened it up a little yeah, more? Yeah, I opened the paint gun, the, uh, the, the dial on the paint gun about one and a half turns out, so I'm putting a little bit heavier coats on now. So uh, it's starting to fill in the uh, rough imperfections from the sandblasting a little better. So it's not quite glossy yet, but uh, one or one or two more coats and we'll be there yep coat number four it's getting better and better nice shine to it already with uh clear it's gonna put it over the top all right we went with five coats and we used almost the entire quart there was just a tiny bit left but we are ready for clear coat now so we're gonna do a really thin layer again for the first one Coat number two of the clear coat. And it's starting to look really, really good. We're just gonna let this dry a little bit and put one third and final coat on and it'll be done. Heavy coat number three. Oh yeah. All right, after you're all done, you deserve a Bob Marley. So I can't uh, thank Kenny enough and his wife for making me this fantastic drink after <laughs> completing our painting. <laughs> Got him back home, big reveal time. Yes, I think they look great. So this has been uh, almost 24 hours now since we painted them. And of course they are super dry and ready to put it back on the car. So when you look close up in mine, you can really see the sand blasting mark where I didn't take the time to sand them out all the way, but I actually kind of like it because from a distance, it kind of adds to the look of them a little bit. It's at least uniform and makes it look like it was intentional. And I guess it's kind of obvious, but now if you haven't seen the ceramic coating video, here's a link to it. You can go check it out. And if you're using your stock center caps, I would also suggest taping off the crest and painting these as well to match your wheels. Here is the grand reveal. So they look on the car now. I really like it. Let me know what you guys think. If you like this color, if you prefer a different color, if you guys want to chat about it, discuss it, have any questions, please check out my Patreon page. I have a link to that in the description. As always, I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time.